All right, the next uh, thing to do with see special relativity, that Einstein said, he said, as the speed of the particle goes up, what he said that means is that the mass goes up. In other words, it gets heavier. Um, so again, if space-time's all wrapped up, so um, that would kind of explain why it gets harder as you uh, get faster and faster. You need more and more energy to get faster, more faster and more faster. So Einstein's explanation, he said, you know, as the speed goes up, so does the, the mass. So you have a relativistic mass. And uh, so it depends on how fast the thing is going. So his relativistic mass would be the rest mass times by the Lorentz Lorentz factor. So that's the relativistic. That's the rest or proper mass. And this here is the Lorentz factor. So, faster something goes, the more difficult it becomes to uh, to speed up any more. Basically, that's kind of where that all comes about. From all right, there's a couple of examples on there, and also there's some videos on this stuff as well. Uh, a couple of examples in your notes there. Examples 50 and 51. So we'll have a look at those now. Here we are in 51. Which of the following A to D is true with regard to the electron speed and its mass as the speed approaches C? So, we're talking about the speed approaches C, and so what? Einstein proposed was this. And if you think it as the speed goes up, the mass goes up. All right, so let's have a look. What are we? Is the speed increases slightly while its mass remains fixed at that? Well, it's not really. Not really clear there because the question's asking as it approaches C. So its speed increases slightly. Um, yeah, that really doesn't help us at all. So I'm thinking no. And then speed increases slightly, the mass increases substantially. Well, depends here on what's happening with the, the rent uh, factor is. So this is a little bit, and so remember the Lorentz factor, that graph that we did before, starts off and then goes. Whoosh. So it depends about on whereas it, this question whereabouts it's um, talking about. So B could be it. Um, speed increases substantially while the mass increases slightly. Um, so, you know, remember this was speed and this was our Lorentz factor. So as we're getting close to C here, um, it's actually starting to increase a lot. That Lorentz factor's getting up a lot here in this area. So if that Lorentz factor's going up a lot, then this is going up a lot. So it's probably not there, that one. Both speed is steady. Well, it's not because that's a curve. So it's looking like that B here is, as the speed increases a little bit, say from there to there, then the Lorentz factors increase, increase quite a bit. Um, so the maths would have increased quite a bit. All right, so 
bit of a tricky question to kind of get your head around, but the closer it gets to the speed of light, um, the more that Lorentz factor goes up. All right. All right, the next section here is relativistic momentum. So, again, if we're saying, well, momentum, of course, is P equals MV, but if we're going now into relativistic terms, then this mass here, as we said, changes. So, you know, the relativistic mass it changes as uh, the speed goes towards the speed of light. So if that's the case, then we would need to redefine the momentum, and we re need to redefine it as the length factor times m times b. Alright, so as we get closer to the speed of light, the Lorentz factor goes up, and so then our momentum goes up. So it's harder and again harder and harder to get thing moving faster. Alright. That then leads us to this. E equals MC. Einstein's famous equation. And uh, it links energy, mass and the speed of light. So what it's really d doing, saying, is that uh, mass and energy are kind of an equivalent thing and they're linked here by the speed of light. So, in your notes there, under Einstein's famous equation, there it is. So, we use the term mass energy. Alright, so, what do we know? Well, we know that the energy of something would be its kinetic energy plus its rest energy. So the energy it has, this is our total, energy it has when it's sitting there plus its kinetic is its total energy. Now if we use Einstein's equation here, our total energy is mc squared. Our kinetic energy is ek, whatever that will be, and we'll get to that, plus our rest energy, M0, rest mass, C squared, and so our kinetic energy then, of our object is MC squared, minus MOC squared. Now, what you will notice here, is that this M here, this one here, that's our relativistic one. So we could rewrite that as gamma M O C squared minus M O C squared. Then we have a couple of um, common factors which we could take out. So MO, the rest mass and the speed of light. So what we then get is that the kinetic energy of something, the relativistic, would be gamma, the Lorentz factor, minus 1 rest mass times C squared. Alright, now of course this, so that's the rest mass how heavy it is when it's stopped. <clears throat> so this then would be the relativistic kinetic energy, and so we need to use this rather than a half mv squared when we get stuff moving pretty fast. And so the speeds we're talking about are greater than 10% of the speed of light. For us when we're talking about Right, so some examples, 52, 3 and 4. Right, so these 
these uh, questions I talked about, two, three, and four, are all based on this information. So the electron in a coloured television tube moves so fast that its mass energy is 21% greater than the mass energy of an electron at rest. The rest mass energy of an electron is 8.2 by 10 to the 14 joule. What is the kinetic energy of the electron? All right, so, so that's increased by 21%. So if it increases by 21%, then it would be plus 21% of that. So the mass would be the relativistic mass. So the relativistic mass would be 1.21 in decimals m naught. So what does that mean? That means there, if we go back to Einstein's equation there, the relativistic mass, that means that the Lorentz factor would be 1.21. All right, so we're going to then um, use that um, to help us figure out um, the mass. Um, Sorry, the kinetic energy. All right, so the other thing we were told is that the rest mass energy was that. So the rest mass energy we're talking about, is so that is E equals mc squared, and that's m0c squared. So the rest mass energy, this bit here, is 8.2 by 10 to the 14 joule. All right, so the kinetic energy, of course, was given by gamma minus 1 times m rest mass c squared. So we can use some of our information there. So the kinetic energy would be 1.21 minus 1 times... Let me just go back and have a look at that. It's 8.2. Where is it? 8.2 by 10 to the 14. And so the kinetic energy of that thing there that you would work out using that on your calculator. So that's 0 0.2, 0 0.21 times 8.2 by 10 to the 14. Negative 14, is it? Let's have a look at 14, it says there. I think that's probably a bit of a typo, maybe. But anyway, not to worry. We'll go with that. So 10 to the 14 just seems a lot of energy. Um, and so that works out to be 1.7 by 10 to the 14 joule. So that's number 52, now 53, let's have a look at 53. Right, 53 is asking us about the speed of the moving electron. All right, so what do we know that could help us? Well, we worked out that Lorentz factor before was 1.21. And we know that the Lorentz factor is given by 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared on c squared. So this v squared here is kind of what we are interested in. There's a little bit of mucking around with this particular question, but anyway. So 1.21 would be equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared on c squared. And now we need to do a fair bit of manipulating around and when we do our fair bit of manipulating around um, what we would get is this we would get that v would be equal to the speed of light times the square root of 1 minus 1 over 1.21 squared 
When you do that, you find that that comes to be 0.56 of the speed. Six of the speed of light in metres per second. All right, so there's a bit, a fair bit of mucking around there with that squaring and swapping sides and stuff. All right. Um, next question, fifty-four. All right, the last one. An object has a rest mass, a rest energy of. 18, so that means that M0C squared is 18 joule. What does that actually mean? Well, what that actually means is that we create some mass here, and this is the amount of energy that it would take to do that. So if you want to find out what the mass would be, you go take your 18 joules and divide it by the speed of light squared and you find that it's very small, uh, 2 by 10 to the minus 16 kilograms. So, you know, extremely, extremely small. So what does it mean if it has a rest energy of that? What it means is the energy taken or used required, let's use required, to create that mass. Alright, okay, so that's the end of that one. Again, it's kind of a stretch in the thought processes. Alright, so um, there's some text questions, there's some other questions, and again, as usual, if you're not sure about something, make sure you uh, ask.